In this chapter we will study the installation of centrifugal pumps. This chapter is divided into the following sections. 1. Installation Location 2. Foundation 3. Mounting of the pump and its driver on the foundation 4. Connecting the inlet and outlet pipes to the pump 5. Checking the installation When installing a pump, consideration must be given to the location where the pump will be installed. The most common considerations include Maximizing the pump's net positive suction head Installing the pump in an easily accessible space Locating the pump where a crane or hoist can easily access it for maintenance Protecting the pump from flooding Locating the pump in an area with good drainage and in an area where electrical wiring and controllers can be conveniently mounted. When installing a pump, NPSH should be maximized. The three primary ways to accomplish this, are To use an adequate supply pressure Minimize the length of suction piping And minimize the number of pipe fittings in the suction piping. In order to maximize NPSH, the pump must have adequate supply pressure. This can be accomplished by mounting the supply tank at a higher elevation than the pump, to provide positive pressure. If the supply tank must be located below the pump's inlet, then the difference between the elevation of the fluid in the tank and the inlet to the pump, should be minimized in order to increase the NPSH to the pump. Another way to increase the NPSH is to minimize the length of the suction piping. Piping to the pump should be short and direct. However, there is a lower limit on the length of piping between the pump's inlet and the supply tank. The minimum uninterrupted length of piping between the pump and the tank should be 10 times the pipe diameter at the pump's suction flange. This length of 10 pipe diameters allows the velocity of the fluid to become uniform across the diameter of the pipe before entering the pump's eye. The number of fittings in suction piping should also be minimized in order to reduce flow losses. Each fitting causes losses that reduce the fluid's pressure. If elbows are used in the suction line, they should be long radius fittings. The suction loss in a long radius fitting is approximately half that of a standard radius fitting. Flow losses reduce the pump's NPSH and efficiency. Shown here is a pump with an excessive number of fittings between the pump and its supply tank. The pump should be located where it can easily be accessed. This would simplify maintenance, inspection, lubrication and repair. If the pump is located in an area that is difficult to access, signs of impending failure and problems such as leaks may not be noticed at an early and easy to correct stage. The longer a small problem goes unnoticed, the larger the problem can become. Large pumps should be mounted in a location where the area over the pump is free of piping, wiring and other obstructions to crane or hoist access. Ideally, there should also be a location on the ceiling to mount weight handling equipment directly above the pump. Because pumps and drivers are usually very heavy, you should only attempt to move them using proper weight handling gear such as a crane, hoist or a forklift. Pumps should be protected from water damage caused by flooding. While the pump may not be damaged by immersion in water, the prime mover may be damaged. If the prime mover is an electric motor, it could also create an electrocution hazard. If the fluid flooding the space is corrosive, the pump could also be damaged. Flooding can be caused through either self-flooding caused by a pump or piping system failure, or external flooding caused by water intrusion into the pump's area from other sources. Ways to avoid or minimize the effects of both self and external flooding include Raising the pump above floor level Installing floor drains in the pump room And possibly installing a small drainage pump for the pump room, commonly called a sump pump. In addition to the above measures, 
to control external flooding. A dam can be constructed around the pump to prevent fluids flooding the pump's area from reaching the pump. Pumps should be installed in a location where electrical wiring can be run to the pump in a manner that does not interfere with movement around the pump. To avoid creating a tripping hazard and to protect the pump's wiring from possible flooding, wiring should not be connected to the pump horizontally close to the ground. Pump wiring should always run from the overhead. There should also be provisions for the control switch and overload protector to be mounted close to the pump.